Hello guys and welcome to a new video and welcome to a new episode of Storytime with Pat. This time I'm going to tell you about that time that I went on tour to Mexico. Have you ever been on tour and visited a city you have never visited before? How about a country? Have you ever been to a different country? A country that you've never seen before? A country that you never thought you'd be in? Well yeah, that happened to me a couple of times actually. But this is going to be a really cool story. But before we get to that, make sure you destroy that like button. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. And if you really want to become a part of the team, man up and hit that join button down there. I had so many experiences in that Mexico tour that at this point, I probably remember about half of them. I do have a folder with over 3,000 pictures and so many places I don't remember ever being in. It's amazing, really a once in a lifetime experience. Okay, so this basically happened around the mid of the tour. We actually started out in Mexico City and we started playing south and then come around and we were going to finish the tour in the northern cities. Now back then in 2010, there was an actual cartel war going on in Mexico and it was crazy. I've never seen or experienced anything like that in my life. Regular people would actually say goodbye to their loved ones as if they were never going to see them ever again. Because in a sense, that could actually be true. And there were a lot of innocent bystanders getting killed every day. A lot of tourists. In fact, the week we made it to Mexico, one of the cartels actually intercepted a bus full of French tourists. And they decapitated all of them. And they hung them off of a bridge over the highway. Of course, I didn't know any of this. So I didn't really know what I was getting into. So anyway, we started out in Mexico City. And we played a big show. Then we went to Guadalajara, which is also a big city. And then we started to play southern cities like Oaxaca, Oaxapan de Leon, Puebla, and so many others. And I was having a blast. But you could tell the atmosphere wasn't really right. There was something off going on. People were actually nervous all the time. And you could tell that the organization could have been a lot better. But because of the fact that we weren't local, the tour manager actually made sure that we had a bodyguard, especially in the northern cities. Because that's where it started to get really dangerous. So one day, we get out to San Luis Potosí, which was my favorite city of the whole Mexican tour. It's not too crowded. It's got really nice architecture. Not so much Spanish colonial architecture, but newer European-influenced architecture that was really cool. But there was something that really caught my attention. Ever since we started getting closer in the highway to San Luis Potosí, we started seeing a lot of military jeeps with three people on them. One of them was driving, a second guy just sitting next to him with an assault rifle and a third guy standing in the back in custom vigilance. And I thought that was weird because that was the first time I'd seen that. And at that point, I had been in about eight, nine cities already. Anyway, so we get to San Luis Potosí early. So we actually get the chance to visit the city and we're walking around being tourists and stuff, just taking pictures and sightseeing and just relaxing and having fun really. But every now and then I'd see that Jeep just driving by. Now, the first couple of times, I actually thought it was just the one Jeep that was patrolling. They actually had ski masks on their faces and they had a hat. So it was really hard to tell that it was actually different people. But at one point, at a street corner, I actually saw two Jeeps intersect each other. So I figured, okay, it's more than one Jeep. Anyway, so I just thought it was kind of weird. But at the same time, I knew that the cartel thing was going on. So I figured, you know, they're just there to protect us. So I was okay with it. So a couple of hours go by and we actually get to the place that we have to play in. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Mexico. I mean, Cancun and Acapulco and those cities are one thing, you know, they're very tourist driven. But the real Mexico is a very different experience altogether. Punctuality is really not their forte. And I don't mean to offend any Mexicans. I mean, they will tell us that all the time. Every time I would ask when the show starts, they would tell me it starts at Mexican time. And Mexican time means whenever it does. We're not going to rush it. So anyway, this tour was basically like a festival tour that was going around the country. So you had like six or seven bands and we were headlining. So we were the last band to play. And the show was scheduled to start at about 7 p.m., which meant that we would probably go on stage at about 11 p.m. So of course that didn't happen. So I remember this specifically. We actually went on stage at 2 a.m. in the morning, which in some countries would actually be considered early. But we were on tour. We were tired and we needed to rest. So anyway, we played the show, we played our set that was anywhere from 13 to 16 songs, depending on how we felt that particular day. So we finished our set, we get off stage, we hung out with the people, took some pictures, signed some autographs, had a little chat. Then we finally made it backstage, got a quick change of clothes, 
and we got on the bus. Now, as I'm getting on the bus, I asked the tour manager, hey, are we going to get some to eat? Because after that show, we're actually going to drive back all the way to Mexico City. And I don't remember how many, but it was definitely more than five hours. And at this point, it was already four in the morning. So I was starving, and I knew that I wasn't going to make it all the way to nine in the morning without eating anything. And we had nothing. We had no food on the bus. So the guy looks at me and says, you know what? It's not a bad idea. We should probably get some to eat before we leave. So he asked me, what do you want to eat? So of course, I'm in Mexico and I have no idea what's open at that time. And at this point, I was already sick of eating tacos and burritos. So I said, pizza, you know, the first thing that popped into my head. And he said, pizza it is. So he tells the driver, you know, let's get some pizza. So he drove around. Of course, we're not from there. We're not from that city. So he drove around for a little bit until we actually found a pizza place. Now, mind you, at this point, it's about 4.30 in the morning. So the guy asked me, what kind of pizza do you want? Because pizza names in Mexico are very different from pizza names in anywhere else, really. So I had no idea what they had available or what they would even call that. So we decided, let's just go there, look at the menu, and point at a picture of something that we might like. So we get off the bus, and of course, the bus is about half a block away from the pizza place. Because the driver first saw the place, and then stopped. So we're about half a block away, not bad. So as we're walking to the pizza place, I see one of those jeeps. Just drive in and stop right in front of the pizza place. So we looked at it, but we kept walking towards the pizza place. Now a second jeep pulls out right behind them, and then a third one. At this point, I turn around and I look at my body and I tell them, that's kind of weird, isn't it? So as I turn my head again, I see that everybody from those Jeeps gets off and they run across the street, kick down the door. And I go, whoa, something's going down there. And all of a sudden, all that I see is just flashes coming out of that door. OMG. So I turn around to tell them, let's get the hell out of here. And I discover that I am the only one standing there. So of course, I run into the tour bus. And as I'm going in, the tour manager goes, so where's the pizza? I'm like, screw the pizza, let's get the f*** out of here. So yeah, thank God we have a bodyguard, right? Anyway, don't let me scare you. I'm sure it's 100% different nowadays. It has been 10 years already. But yeah, that was an experience to say the least. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you have any stories like these and you want to share them, make sure you do so in the comment section down below. And let me know if you've ever been to Mexico and what was your experience like. Also, let me know if you've ever been on tour because there's always really cool stories from touring bands. Anyway, if you liked the video, don't forget to destroy that like button. Subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. And if you really want to become a part of the team, man up. Just hit that join button down there. I will see you guys next time. Pat out. Metal on, dudes.